<laughs> Bet you didn't see me again, huh? Well, let's see what we got here. I got a little bit of the uh, green screen right here. A little bit of the uh, poorly dim lit watt lighting right here for the comedic effect. Now, let's get right into it. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another movie review vlog. Yes, I am back. And this time around, I am going to review IT Chapter 2. Now, a couple of years back, I did review the very first eight movie, and I thought that was a quite the spectacular remake in comparison to the 1994 made-for-television film. Now, this time around, the first movie, they focused more on the children's aspect, and now we flash forward to 27 years later, where we got the adults taking on Pennywise the Cloud, otherwise known as IT. Now, I gotta say right off the bat that when I watched the first movie, I enjoyed that a lot more in comparison to this new one, mostly because I enjoyed the whole children camaraderie that they had during the aesthetic of the 80s feel to it. Now, this time around, you just got a bunch of adults who are pretty much trying to stop a monster, and that's pretty much it. And in, in, throughout the movie, you do have a little bit of flashbacks from the uh, kid actors as well, which was nice. To, which was all well and good because they mostly just transitioned back and forth, kind of fluid, mostly fluidly, but which is not that bad. However, when, the, when you watch the actor portion of it, it feels like every other generic straight horror movie, especially with a lot of jump scares. And my god, there are a lot of jump scares for mostly just quick shock value. Some of them, a very small 25% of those jump scares really got to me, but and as for everything else, I was just like, you know, I've seen horror movies like this before, I know when the jump scares are gonna, jump scares gonna happen, and three, two, one. Yeah, it's almost something like that. Now, aside from the multitude of jump scares, a lot of the uh, backstories to a lot of these characters were a lot more flushed out, and uh, they fall more truthfully to the uh, book side, of, to the uh, book side of things in comparison to the television, which I really did like that part. They always had that nice little consistency with this from the actual novel as to how to destroy Pennywise and develop a whole little mini history and a little origin story for the clown itself. I did enjoy most of the characters in here, especially some of the lead ones of course with James McAvoy, Jessica Chastain, and Bill Sar Skarsgård, which I did enjoy Bill Skarsgård another time around as, the, as Pennywise the Clown. However, like they showed a little bit too much of his face value in comparison to his true form, in comparison to his true spider form, which should have been an actual creature rather than him be looking like a humanoid clown looking spider, which I felt it was a little off-putting, but I guess they just wanted to squeeze every little scent out of him for the face time. There was a lot of horror special effects which kind of worked for the most part and other times didn't. Mostly it just looked a little uh, CG, like extremely CG. At other times, you could just know these special effects kind of worked more fluidly with the uh, creatures that manifested the fears of for the characters. The music was also not that bad, and uh, the resolution and the ending to the movie was actually quite well done. A um, little cliche for the most part, but I kind of like. I kind of felt like it was missing a few things here and there. There was also a few cameos throughout this movie trying to make it feel like a little bit too, mo too much like the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe in some kind of way, which in a lot of ways Stephen King novels are pretty much based in his own little continuity of his own imagination, but I just felt like some of those cameos that they had in here just, didn't fit, just felt pretty wasted, while other times there were other small characters who had less of a role in the movie, but had more of a role in the book. Like one character in particular who escapes from the mental hospital, just goes along with the whole plan of just killing all the other main protagonists, but not actually diving into the reason as to why, which they fully explain in the books. Otherwise, he's just another subplot that just gets in their way. So overall, I did enjoy the music, it was an okay film. I wouldn't recommend seeing it in theaters while it's still out, I'd probably just recommend getting it when it's on sale at a blue, on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever you feel best. And with that said, I would have to give this movie a 3 out of 5 stars. It was pretty generic, pretty okay. Probably watch it once a year if you're really interested or if you're a diehard Stephen King fan. I wouldn't watch, it's not too much of a replay value. You get more of a thrill out of the first movie rather than the second one, if you ask me. And that's pretty much it for this video. And I just want to give you guys a bit of a quick mini update. I am currently working on a few new videos as well. I've just been taking a bit of a minor hiatus this, throughout this entire year, mostly because I'm working on some personal issues on my end and other things that just, I feel like I don't really need to explain it, but you guys can understand what, 
uh, when I mean that the personal issues. We all got them and we have to work them out in some way or another. But hopefully for the most part I will be back to putting out more relative or more recent um, more newer movies to review and all this for the for a weekly vlog because I want to try to stay consistent on this channel again. And so if you guys have any requests for any possible movies for me to review, whether it be new or old, feel free to let me know over on my Patreon page for the low price of $1 a month and I will review any type of movie just for you for that low price of $1. And that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching, stay tuned, and I'll see you all next time.